Hey, I'm Caleb with Mink's Switch Up, and today we're going to make this really cool colonial candle box. This is a really cool piece. It's kind of like a period piece because these, of course, by the name, were prominent during colonial times by colonists before electricity was around. You would have one of these hanging on the wall in your house, and you would have candles up here, and I guess you could put matches down here. Now there's tons of variations on these. You've got shorter squatty ones, you've got short wide ones, you've got really tall ones, you got some without a drawer, some with different decorative styles. The imagination could be limitless on this project. We obviously live in a time period where the actual use for these is not really needed. I'm going to use mine and hang it in the shop and just store some shop stuff in there. I got the idea for that from fine woodworking magazine with somebody who had a, a legit one from the actual time period. It's a cool project and you could use it for anything. So let's check it out. Cutting the back of the box out to 13 inches long. I want the top of this box to have an arc on it and I find that my router is going to do a pretty good job at giving me that arc. And before I cut out that arc, there's still another element I want to add to this. So right now I'm going to connect each end of my semicircle here. And I'm going to use this push stick. One more element I want to design before cutting it out is putting a hole in here so I can hang it. held together with some double-sided carpet tape and I'm gonna cut this kind of an S shape out on it. This is the front of my box and I want to do a decorative element on the front of it as well. In order to do that I need to know where the center of this board is which is a little hard to do because this cedar is kind of cut. I think I can make it work though. It's hard, at least here, for me to find cedar that isn't warped in some way. I'm the fucking worst at dropping shit. Constantly drop stuff. Just can't seem to stop dropping stuff. So I can cut this little area out and just give it a little more uh, pizzazz. I made myself confused as hell because what I want to do is I want a drawer on the bottom. So what I did is this is the face of it, but I put these on here to figure out the width. So I marked the lines and then I brought it in about a sixteenth of an inch. I want to cut this out on the bandsaw so I can cut these lines as straight as I can on the bandsaw but then how do I cut horizontally because on the bandsaw normally you gotta like waste out material in here to turn it. I don't know I'm gonna make those cuts on the bandsaw first and see if I could use the coping saw to get in there. <laughs> Here 
and what I'm, I've got these scrap pieces of pine that I already had in the shop. They're about half an inch thick. I want to use those for the sides of my drawer, but I want to make some rabbits for them to go in. So I've got the blade set to about half the thickness of this. Now I'm going to cut the sides of the drawers. Now I've got my stop block set up. I've got my blade set less than half the thickness of these pieces. Now I'm going to cut a groove in here to fit an eighth inch piece of wood for the drawer bottom. somewhere to dry. I think I also want to go ahead and glue the sides onto the front now and I don't want to glue them to the back because the way it is is if I get these flush on the sides of the front then that leaves that cup facing inwards so I could put like a temporary spacer in there to spread it out and get it flush with the sides of the back but if I glue them to the back first then that cup is facing inward so they don't line up and it, it just seems like it'd be more of a pain that way so I think I'll glue them onto the sides now and they're just getting edge jointed cutting a spacer I could just use the bottom piece that will sit above the drawer and that will work as a spacer just fine and then I could glue this together. commonplace objects or if they just use nails or whatever but I don't care because I don't want no damn stinking nails on this. found the center of my little drawer face and I'm going to drill just a tiny hole in it for a little drawer pole. This was part of just a little shaker peg. Pop that in there. Here in Texas you need to double check your stuff to make sure there ain't no bugs try to set up shop in there. Since this is, I guess, what you would call a period piece, I don't want to finish it with lacquer because I feel like that would make it look very not within the scope of the project. So I'm going to use this here teak oil. I think an oil finish will look appropriate on this.
now that it's done, i got to figure out what to put in it. I've got this drawer on my workbench, and it's filled with all kinds of small little bits and bobs and stuff, like these hooks. And I've got a whole bunch of these little eyelet screws that are just loose in here, if I can find some, so I'll keep them in this little drawer. And up top, I think I'll use it for my sanding sticks. I use those on almost every project. All right, this is the spot where I decide it's gonna live. So anyways, I like this project enough to where I'm, I've got half a mind to make a couple more of these. So maybe with some half inch pine or something, make some real nice ones, maybe give them away as gifts or something, because they're really cool and you can make them really unique. And it wasn't until after I had it assembled that I realized I wasn't very symmetrical up here, but I think that's okay because since, since it's kind of a period piece based off of something from probably 17th, 18th century, they were all made by hand, so they probably weren't perfectly symmetrical either. But I love the way it looks. Traditionally, these would be made out of pine. I didn't have enough pine on hand to make mine. That's what I wanted to use, so... I use this cedar instead. Really happy with how it came out. So if you liked and enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up because I have new woodworking projects every Friday. There, it's always something different, so you never know what it'll be. It could be something like this. It could be a game. Who knows? Be sure and subscribe so you don't miss none of that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.